This video series will teach you in detail how to program in presentation by building a real-world experiment step by step. Before viewing this series, it is recommended that you view the Running an Experiment, Setting up an Experiment Parts 1 and 2, Using the Presentation Editor, and Introduction to Writing Scenarios Parts 1 and 2 Only video tutorials. However, note that much of the material in the Introduction to Writing Scenarios series will be covered in this series in more depth. Therefore, don't worry if you found parts of that series confusing or if it went too quickly. When learning to program in any language, it is very important that you are actively creating and running programs yourself from the start. It is assumed in this series that you are entering the same programs as I enter them and running them when I run them. In fact, the stimulus displays produced will not be included in the video, so you must run them yourself to see what they do. In addition, if something isn't clear from the examples presented, you should pause the course and experiment on your own to see what happens. In this course, I will be using presentation version 17.1. Although the programs we will write will also run on many previous versions, I may use certain small features new in this version, not available in previous versions. Therefore, it's recommended that you also use version 17.1 or later. Note that presentation licensing is independent of version, so you may install and use any presentation version you like, even if it was released after you purchased your license. Also, presentation is always fully backward compatible, and multiple presentation versions can be installed on the same system at the same time. So if you don't have version 17.1 or later installed and running on your computer, please pause the video now and install it. During this series, we will develop a simple reaction time task. As we move through programming the task, we will add more options to it, like ways to change which stimuli will be used and restrictions on randomization. We will also change the relationship between stimuli and responses so that we might have a forced choice task or a go-no-go -go paradigm. To begin, first set up the experiment settings in presentation. To do so, we can start by choosing Quick Start from the experiment menu and then choosing a directory to put the experiment in. We can create a new folder if necessary. Then we can fill in a name for the experiment and the other names will auto fill. You can leave the settings here as they are so that we won't generate a PCL file, but we'll generate an SCE and SDF file in addition to our experiment file. Now we have a new experiment and have been moved to the editor tab and we have experiment one SCE for our scenario file. Let's make a few changes on the general panel of the settings tab for our experiment before we get started. We will often want to always show report while we are programming so that we can look at information about what happened after we run our scenario. That can help us with debugging. For now, we will use never show report. We can get rid of wait for return to start scenario and show stimuli loading and ready screens while we're programming to speed things along when we run our scenario. Of course, when you are ready to use a scenario later, you may wish to change those settings again before running a paradigm with your participants. OK, now we're ready to get started. We can run our scenario from the editor using F5. The scenario currently does nothing, so we can run it. When we ran, this status panel popped up so we could see progress as the scenario ran. You can toggle this panel using Ctrl-T or the icon here. In the next video, we will begin programming.